Hello, my name is Łukasz Ukrowski. I represent Studies. We are one of the distributors who are focusing very deeply on the open networking. Today, we will go again over our Back to Open program. Uh, this time uh, with uh, friends from the BISDN. Hagen, could you introduce yourself, please? Hello, I'm Hagen. I'm a co-founder, CEO of BISDN. Uh, company is like 10 years old, and I think I have a, a slide on, on introdu introducing the company later. So I'm Hagen. Pleasure to have you here. Jan? Hi. My name is Jan. Um, I work as a senior solution architect at BISDN for almost three years now, and we'll probably uh, use some slides later to discuss a bit the open source part of BISDN Linux. Perfect. Speaking about our agenda today, we will go over maybe not introduction, but refreshing some information about our back to open program. Uh, what we as a store is offering under that program, so from the audit perspective and the migration offer, and then we will stay with the BISDN gentlemen. So introduction, more about the white box features and the open source going through the agenda. In the end, please feel free to always uh, ask some questions, write those questions to to the to the to the chat. In, in the end, we will go over the Q and A session and we will be delighted. Uh, maybe also before I will forget, we should also have something from the uh, handouts that will be launched pretty soon. So uh, you will find there some materials to, 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 to download, like the brochures, like the, like the data sheets, like a lot of uh, really interesting stuff. So let's start uh, back to open what it is about and what we create, why we created that uh, program. So maybe just a reminder, what happened at, uh, with, the, with the Cumulus uh, Linux? So as most of you are aware, uh, Cumulus being acquired by Mellanox, NVIDIA, and unfortunately uh, that causes a lot of issues. And, 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 and we see that, uh, um, you know, first some porting with a new platform stuff, uh, but, but then uh, also, let's say, more and more challenges been, been, been appearing. And uh, not sure what is the current version of the Cumulus, but officially from the 4.4 uh, 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 release, you will find, you can read that, that unfortunately, uh, from that release, Cumulus Linux is not supporting any longer those all Broadcom-based networking platform. So the 4.3 is the latest one. You can read more details on that sources, um, which is available on that slide. So what that means for you if you are currently a Cumulus user? Uh, unfortunately, if you are not able to, to get uh, further uh, software updates, that 4.3 will be your latest version. Um, that is also related with potentially uh, new uh, feature developments. Unfortunately, it will also stop. No bugs fixed. I believe that, um, of course, the Cumulus team will try to do uh, their best to support you with a uh, quality uh, bugging fixing, but unfortunately, when they lose the access uh, to the Broadcom, uh, they will face some challenges. Uh, and uh, speaking about the new platforms, unfortunately, this is something that we saw already on the beginning. So if you are looking for some latest uh, tried and free uh, platforms, not all of them are available because simply the porting also started. So, uh, if you will decide to, 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 to thinking about the migration, to choose our program and, and go with the proposal from the uh, BISDN gentlemen, uh, one of the biggest advantages is that simply you can get the, the new software according to, to your current Cumulus platforms basically free of charge. Uh, if you need, you only need to pay for the maintenance support. Uh, again, you will get a software which is uh, future-proofed uh, with uh, support, with uh, maintenance, with uh, uh, new features developments. 
uh, going to the to the to the to the future proof platforms uh, that will be again open. So uh, based on the program, you will find a couple of different software variation, and each of those vendors is providing um, pretty decent hardware compatibility list. Uh, and uh, we are aware that this process is maybe not so easy. So definitely, you will need to get some consulting uh, help. And this is where store this, uh, where we are, let's say, ready to, to, to service you on that matter. So speaking about the audit and our migration offer based on that program, so what is included in the package? Evaluation and the compatible bare metal hardware Obviously, this is the first point. So uh, if you are currently using some Broadcom system, uh, whatever, if this is an uh, Edge Core, Dell, or any other vendor, we need to check uh, the hardware compatibility list with the software of your choice. We need to identify and analyze your requirements, obviously. So taking a look on the topology, taking a look on the configuration of the required features today and tomorrow, and we can help to prepare the right migration plan. But if someone needs um, further, let's say, help, we are uh, well equipped to, to service you also on those uh, other points. So going to uh, test design, test installation planning, um, if you are lack for any kind of the documentation, which is from time to time also happening, we are also uh, happy to help on that matter. Going finally to the know-how transfer training uh, on different level, including the operation. Uh, what is maybe also new before we will go to, to our friends from the BISDM. So we know that open networking is, is maybe uh, uh, not the easiest one. Of course, if you are a currently Cumulus user, so it means that you already have a, a decent experience. Uh, but to those who are new in that field, who are just starting, we created a couple of different packages uh, where we are providing our uh, qualified network engineering time, like a package of two, five, or uh, eight hours. Uh, and uh, we package it into like a fancy name, like you see, switch off, switch it, as we know, where we can help you and go through from maybe very basic uh, uh, introduction into the open networking uh, world, only software play installation licensing to really deeper and deeper building a network farming, uh, bringing the network farming into operation, running Q&A tests, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, in general, uh, was your decision wrong that you choose a Cumulus Linux? We are always saying that the answer is no, simply you choose open networking and open networking is, is that freedom of the open hardware on the open software. It's maybe not ideal that uh, software or choice could disappear, but this is that freedom. You can choose a hardware, you can choose a software, you can mix a different hardware vendors, and if needed, you can always change your software. We can help with that migration. So your way to back to open, as we are saying, there are three simple steps. Get in touch with us, with us or directly with the with the with my friends from BISDN. Uh, step two, choose your migration plan. This is of course where we can help. And step three, maybe a little bit making that flat. You are enjoy and 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 again open with the back to open the BISDN. Normally we had some animation. Uh, some of you who've been with the Cumulus uh, from the beginning uh, maybe are recognizing those tartars, rocket tartars. So the rocket is still flying. <laughs> the open networking is definitely not stopping here. And we have today a really great proposal from the BISDN. And beauty, if I can say from, from, so from my end, is that those gentlemen are locally for us who base as we are in Europe, I base some of you are aware in Poland, they are the company located here in Germany. So, gentlemen, back to you. Feel free. Okay. Um, how could we do the page change? Uh, it was here. Yes. You told me before. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello. 
it's all in vain. I mean, you're, you're, you're telling me something and I forget it the next day. Um, good afternoon, good morning, whatever, um, wherever you are situated. Um, we are BISDN, we are 10 years old. Um, we are, if you count everyone together, maybe up to 20 people, um, 14 of those in Berlin. We are a self-funded uh, company, um, so we're really in the in the best sense of the world, in the, uh, of the word independent. Um, our income is mostly from uh, from NRE at the moment, and we're just building um, uh, a new income source from from software licenses, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, the core of what we do is the is the white box NOS, so it's BISDN Linux. Um, we open sourced BISDN Linux last August, I guess, and since then um, we are offering um, the images pre-built free of charge. But you can also go to GitHub, um, get the get the build chain, build your own system. Um, and so the the idea is we want to provide a complete Linux on a switch that touches and feels like uh, like any other Linux that you would run on a server and we want to do that in open source as an open source product. We do have closed source solution but that's applications on top of it so that is uh, not the open um, core that, that I'm speaking about. We are working very closely with Intel, Tibet and Deutsche Telekom that's probably natural because we're um, based in um, Germany, Europe. Um, the uh, going to BISDN Linux uh, as such, the supported hardware list is not very long. The uh, the point being here, a we are a small company. B everything that we list here is actually running, and we have the CI/CD pipelines. That means uh, our racks are actually hosting uh, two of each, so a pair of of each kind. And so adding new platforms is a certain effort, but we make sure that those platforms that are listed here are actually working and actually supported. Um, BISDN Linux is based on Yocto. So it's a, uh, Yocto is a, for those who are not familiar with Yocto, Yocto is a build system that originally comes from embedded systems engineering. So you find a lot of uh, in-car communication and, and whatever other embedded systems uh, building around Yocto. We thought that this is the right way forward instead of uh, taking, let's say, a server uh, operating system or server distro like Debian uh, to start from. We decided to start from Yocto right again. Um, there's a link down there. You can you can uh, check out our, the code on, on GitHub to build your own images. Um, that is this. The core elements are the kernel. So the main philosophy, and that's very close to if you if you come from Cumulus, if you if you know Cumulus, uh, the idea is basically the same. And even if I may say, um, we're even even more bound to what Linux can do. Um, we have the the kernel as the state keeper. Uh, so the kernel is is on, on one hand side uh, keeping all the static uh, network configuration, but also dynamic, uh, like the uh, forwarding database, routing databases, and everything. All those, uh, all changes in the in the routing databases and forwarding databases typically create a Netlink event. We're tapping into Netlink with a little um, C++ written um, basebox D controller so that is a small SDN controller sitting on the switch um, and that speaks open flow to the uh, switch ASIC it speaks the specific uh, OFDPA and I can uh, get a bit more uh, detail on that for most of, for all intents and purposes um, we we hide open flow from from the user so the switch is internally an open flow switch but externally you wouldn't notice unless you want to, which is certainly always an option. Um, the, um, the schematic here on the right hand side um, shows a bit, 
better um, the the way that that we use Net, uh, Netlink. So Netlink is not not just a um, a communication channel; it's a bus actually. So we uh, come with the with for instance uh, free range routing as the routing engine. Uh, we are making sure that we're uh, always on the on the latest uh, version. So I guess it's eight dot two dot two at the moment. Eight two two, yeah. Um, so the, which was published last week. So the cool part of having a Yocto build system is you can always work on the latest uh, kernels, latest software versions. It's a it's a relatively small step um, as long as stuff works in the CI/CD, <laughs> um, which then is another topic. Uh, the SDN controller speaks OpenFlow, and it speaks. Uh, we added a GFC channel for things that you can't do with OpenFlow. Uh, to give an example, it's mirror ports, it's VXLAN uh, tunnel creation. So that's stuff that that cannot be expressed in OpenFlow, since simply, um, yeah, because it's mostly configuration of interfaces, and it cannot really be expressed in the match action way that OpenFlow has. Um, yeah, and then we go on with this. The Yocto build system uh, creates relatively small images. Uh, so we, we are around 110 uh, megabyte of image size. Um, we, we do like technically uh, a bit more advanced. We do uh, pull um, the platform specific code. So the stuff that drives fans, LEDs and so on. Uh, we pull that from the uh, ONL Open Network Linux platform repo, pre-build it, and then um, insert it into in, into the Octo. We try to stay on the uh, latest possible or latest uh, supported kernel. So at the moment we are five fifteen dot sixty whatever something. <laughs> something. <laughs> the the good part here is yeah we are we are really trying to to stay on the latest LTE versions. Um, so, as this is a standard kernel, we will also we're also able to use whatever tools that you would normally use on a server to configure the networking. So, IP route, systemd network D, free range routing, IE Zebra, uh, to configure your your network. And you don't have to learn any any CLI. You don't have to learn learn a new language. So we, we are um, not coming from like a, an enterprise uh, switching background where everybody would need to be uh, certified for uh, whatever switches. Um, we, our background is more data center and therefore we, we like the, the ideal mindset, the, the mindset is, is more a Linux soid mindset, if I may say that. Um, next one. Um, the bit of a, of a tricky part is uh, Basebox D is also open source um, on on GitHub. You can find it if you go to BISDN there. They, you know, they also find Basebox D. Um, it sits on top of OFDPA 305. That is the uh, the most tricky part, as um, that is apparently. Um, well, it is. It's out there. Uh, this code. We are maintaining it. We're we're pushing it forward. We, so we recently added uh, the the Trident three platforms. Um, but apparently, um, OpenFlow is is nearing, let's say, the end of its lifetime. But if you if you remember the way it was built, um, the OpenFlow part here is normally not visible to the user. So. It will also not be visible when we go and uh, put more emphasis on the GFC side. So that is basically we're gradually moving over from uh, moving away from from OpenFlow to other abstractions. And so the future proofness, the future proofity, whatever it's called, something like that, yeah, um, <laughs> is is in here. So. Uh, it's Linux that 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 we are interested in, uh, in and that you should be interested in, and then there's something under the hood, which is at the moment here, um, OpenFlow, um, but it will become something else pretty soon. 
we only support XGS for the same reason, basically. Um, at the moment, we only support XGS, that is the data center switch uh, series of, uh, of Broadcom. Those other uh, switches, the, the, the DNX series, the Qumran's, Jericho's, and so on, um, do not have a stable uh, OFDPA. Um, so we, we, that is, that is along the, the, the story of adding new platforms uh, with different abstractions. That's what we're currently working on. So expect also other platforms to come. But for now, everything that you find is the more, let's say, lower and high throughput, uh, uh, less costly versions of, uh, of the Broadcom switches. So what else do we have? My summary of it, and then I would probably hand over to uh, to Jan to spend a couple of uh, of minutes on the on the actual open open source project. My summary is: the idea is we want to have white box switches configurable like any other Linux system. That's not our idea. That the idea itself is is old, and it also it also is older than 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 Cumulus was. So um, the uh, and it it reappears at the moment in things called switch dev. So actual kernel drivers, um, Linux kernel drivers that that make the ASIC available. What we do at the moment is uh, similar to switch dev, but it's a user space process. It's not a kernel driver. Um, we therefore. We can use default because of we, because we use Netlink. We can use default Linux tools. Um, we we do most of what we do with Ansible, but can also use Salt, um, whatever other stuff um, for static and especially layer two configuration. Um, we we use systemd networkd. Um, that is stuff that you would not be able to configure with the free range routing. So there's always a mix of tools that uh, is required for network configuration. You can use probably any of the tools um, that, that are listed here. So Ansible with IP route, uh, systemd networkd and Zebra. And there are certain dynamicities that, that would dictate the, the, the choice of the, of the tools. So um, on OpenFlow, I think I spent my time already saying that you would not need to to uh, program OpenFlow. Um, we hide it for you, but if you would like to have it, there is um, the, the there's a little script that's called change config, um, and by that you can uh, take offline our uh, uh, Basebox D controller and use any other OpenFlow controller. So that is of interest for some of the functions. Um, here, as an example, um, MPLS pseudo wires. They uh, some some things are just not yet in the kernel. So if you want to have MPLS, if you want to have MPLS pseudo wires, you may use other tools to get this uh, done. And we ship the Rio controller because it's Python based and it's much smaller than Onos or Open Daylight. It actually fits quite nicely onto the switch, so you can run that alternatively to Basebox D on the switch, and then write your own SDN code in Python. Um, and Rio is quite comfortable, and we also include some example code of how you can do, for instance, MPLS pseudowires. That is, I believe, my summary. Um, then I would also hand over, want to hand over to uh, to Jan because he's the guy who has the the open source project under his. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to. So I'm I'm basically uh, um, trying to push this whole open source part of the project because like I come from a background um, which was mostly focused uh, on OpenStack and all of the different projects 
evolving or that evolved and developed around around OpenStack and this uh, this whole community. Um, and for me, it was always pretty important if you call something open and if you go off, go for this white box or coming off the shelf hardware or whatever you want to call it, um, you should be able to build it and you should be able to look at the code. You should be able to fix it. You should be able to redesign it. So all of the, the things that are typically associated with open source and for us, the with BI and Linux, it's really like it's it's a core part. So we spent a lot of time last year cleaning up all of the licenses um, because that's always a mess. If you build a large Linux distribution, you have to go through all the license to figure out what you're actually allowed to use. And like in August, we really pushed out all of the code parts that we have that you need to build BI and Linux up to GitHub. So right now you're basically able to download, to clone the code from GitHub and you can build the full thing. You can edit everything, you can add your own packages, you can remove packages that you don't need or think are stupid there. Um, you can always look where stuff breaks and fix, the, fix your own things. Um, so the idea really is to give you the full freedom of working with it. And that also means we're not charging licensing or anything. So you can just download it, install it on the switch, and it's free even for commercial use. So it's not like uh, we charge you for any licensing there. If you want support from us, obviously there needs to be some way to make money with it. So that's that's basically the part where Storedis also comes in that, that uh, offers all of the different support packages and where we do consulting and stuff like that, try to help you. Uh, onboard your switches, try to uh, maybe help you add new platforms if you have any specific things there. Um, but in general, we're really focusing on the open source part because we also build on open source, right? So Linux itself is, I guess, a very good example for an open source project. And then all the other things that Hagen mentioned here, like free range routing, pretty cool open source project for routing that I guess is the most complete in terms of feature set for all the different dynamic routing protocols, all of that stuff. Um, it's developed very actively and we kind of rely on that. So we're also trying to contribute back whenever possible. And we basically just grab the code from the other open source project, compile it into our, uh, with Yocto basically into our own distribution and use it there. Same goes for Ryu, same goes for systemd networkd, all of the other different tools there. All of them are open source out there, and if you're unhappy with anything, you can either patch it yourself or you can ask us or hire anybody else to patch it for you. Um, so that's that's one of the basic things where a lot of people would maybe argue, ah, you're a small company. Um, how can we trust that you can actually support it? It's kind of true. We're a small company. Um, I guess, although we're small, we have quite a bit of experience with, with that specific topic, with software-defined networking, because we have been doing that for quite some time. And in addition to that, you don't really need us in the end to support the code, right? Because all of the things are out there. There's multiple people working on FR. There's hundreds of people working on Linux. So all of the things that we build on are already supported by a pretty large community. And if you want to, you can just grab the ice and links as it is, modify it, run it yourself, um, and then see where it goes. But obviously we're still happy if you um, want some support from us and if we can somehow help you uh, getting this to run. And there's Slack channels, mailing lists. There is, stuff. yeah, yeah. All the, all the things that you're kind of used to for open source, There's uh, you can create GitHub issues, you can send out emails and slack messages and and i guess all of the the typical things uh, right. we don't don't really have the large open source community that we're trying to work on it i guess we're pretty pretty unknown in that um in that field so not too many people have heard of bi still linux itself i think a lot more people have heard uh, about onl so one of the core parts that we use there as hagen mentions the onlp so all of the drivers actually come from another open source repo um, and yeah, I mean, it's basically uh, combining a couple of different tools and then adding a little bit of the, the OFDPA there, so of our abstraction and then Basebox D, our SDN controller, which is also obviously open source, um, to make it really look like a, like a plain Linux that you can use like any other Linux. So that's, I guess, my part for the open source thing. I don't know, I can say something for the slide here. Um, I guess the, the, the open source thing continues to the docs, obviously. So uh, if you want to learn a bit more about 
the features and how it all comes together. Um, you don't really need that slide set here because all of the things are also on Docs BI's NDE. So that's a GitHub pages. So you can just just go there. Um, if you find any typos, please create a pull request. <laughs> um, no, so it's really all of the docs should be out there. Um, there should be extensive documentation on how to configure um, different scenarios for BGP or ISS or whatever you pick for your dynamic routing. Um, there's a bit more under the hood documentation if you really want to go deeper and if you want to look at the open uh, open flow part and an OFDPA or ONL for that for that sake. So there's there's I guess a lot lot of stuff out there to read if you want to dive into that. And as said, I guess the easiest way is just like if you have a switch that is on the compatibility list, download it. It's free. Install it. Use it. Let us know how it works. <laughs> Yes, I, I guess in uh, with regards to feature lists, um, you find that on the on the brochure that you can that you can download here. Um, I would say it is basically a complete uh, enterprise switch slash router. Uh, so what what do we have? We have STP, MSTP, RSTP uh, on the VLANs, <laughs> double VLANs. <laughs> Um, all the things, I all guess. The, all, the, all the routing. Um, what we don't have, we can also add that, uh, is at the moment a multi-chassis link aggregation. We're working on that. That is going to come at some point uh, in the near future. And then we're adding more more platforms. So right now, um, I had that on my first slide. Um, it's, the, it's the Edge Core um, 5835. So that is a, a 10 uh, slash 100G platform. Yeah, 10, 10 G Trident three, yep. uh, X Trident three X five. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you're right. It's an it's an X five, um, and yeah, we 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 keep adding platforms at the at the speed that uh, that is dictated by how much we can add and we can support, and also where customers have requests. So we we it, it normally doesn't take. Uh, a long time to add a new platform, but we need some sort of motivation to do that. <laughs> motivation can as well be money, by the way. <laughs> That's a pretty cool. Good. Um, I think that is it from our side um, with regards to um, introducing BISD and Linux. Yeah, there's there's one more slide here if you want to go go through that. Like, I mean, it's it's really like made for. I guess one of the obvious questions where um, usually whenever we introduce ourselves, whenever we talk about BSC and Linux, there's at one point the question, like how does it compare to all of the different uh, network operating systems out there? I mean, the obvious one here uh, for this specific webinar is like the direct comparison to Cumulus Linux. Um, I guess the first obvious point that stands out apart from the Broadcom not supported by Cumulus anymore, or is is really this uh, licensing part? So for Cumulus, you pay per switch. For us, it's free. Grab it, run it. You don't need to pay for the per switch or whatever. Um, the downside, on the other hand, compared to Cumulus, is we're just on Broadcom. Cumulus is theoretically on Broadcom and Mellanox, but then again, judging also from like uh, coming back to what Lukas said earlier, the Broadcom part is. Uh, not not pushed anymore, I guess. Um, our code base also compared, um, we're completely open source. So it's a part from a very, very small thing um, that is called the, the OFDPA in there so that we, we ship that as a binary for every build. So you can just grab this small binary part and it's just this very small abstraction layer. Everything is, else is open source. Sadly, we're not allowed to open source this one. Um, but as said, you can build it yourself and I was never able to build uh, Cumulus Linux myself. Um, Configuration-wise, and that's another thing that really puts us apart from, from all of the other vendors, it's purely a Linux generic. So it's really just like, like with any other system. We don't have a specific CLI or anything. We didn't invent any way to configure networking. It's just the default tool, system, the network, the IP route to FOR, whatever you can think of, that's really the, the part. And then support-wise, 
pretty much the same again as for all the other platform paid subscriptions so if you want support if you want our help it's a paid subscription plan you can contact stories for that they offer all of the different options there um so i guess that's the that's the big difference and then one word maybe on on one specific thing that i was asked a couple of times regarding sonic because sonic is also free and open source out there um, and it has a very diverse platform support. So why would I use BISDM Linux and not, not Sonic here? Um, I guess the best answer is the architecture of Sonic is a lot more complicated than our architecture is. So for Sonic itself to build it um, and to modify it, I guess you would need a pretty big engineering team to be able to do that. And behind Sonic, most of the companies that sell Sonic there is a pretty big engineering team actually supporting that. So running that yourself, modifying that yourself might be pretty hard. Um, and then again, configuration wise, the biggest difference here is Sonic does not have a clear way to configure it. There's multiple different interfaces that you can use. Um, you have to pick one and you have to get used to how that specific interface can be done. Like there is FR in Sonic, but the way how you configure FR is not the way how you would configure FR on Linux system, but very different from that. Um, so I guess the difference here is we really rely on plain Linux, plain Netlink, just the, the interfaces that are there in any other system. For Sonic, there is an additional layer of, of indirection there. So it might, might be a very different learning curve for you to get, get used to Sonic. So we have two questions already there. Oh, cool. Exactly. So maybe let's 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 let's. So a, a, anything, Jan, to to add to to that? The no, last... no, no. That 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 was it, basically, on that that slide. So because the 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 second question is very much going into the into the direction that you that you just had. Um, what's the motivation uh, for writing a new network OS instead of contributing to Sonic or Dent? Um, my first answer is well, we've been there before, but that's, that's <laughs> not, that's oh, not we are already so old, yeah. <laughs> that's not that's not a cool answer, um, but it is what it is. Um, it, with Sonic, it really is too big for us. Um, we will not. We size is a different question, right? Um, so rebasing Basebox D on Sci is something that we're seriously considering at the moment that is also then probably answering the p4 runtime question uh, earlier um, it is more likely that we that we move over to to sci um, but p4 runtime we do work on tofinos at the moment so there is not i think we will have eventually multiple southbound interfaces of basebox d um, we do not want to abandon the, the open flow part at the moment because it works nicely, um, but we will add other, uh, other abstractions. Um, maybe that is an answer to the, to the before runtime part. Yeah, to the two ones. I also see a few. I was making so notes. Maybe. So how about the, the plans for uh, platforms outside, outside the Broadcom SGS? I believe that party you'll be saying something about the motivation again. <laughs> But how do you no, like I mean the, the the motivation is obviously one part, but then again, like it it's kind of limited with the architectures that we have right now. So even if you give us a lot of money, you'll not be able to port OFDPA to Mellanox switches or to Marvell or whatever else because that's just not there, right? So as maybe mentioned so Hagen mentioned that earlier a bit, uh regarding uh, the pure Linux and the switch dev model. So um for us, the idea is the interface should be Linux. And that's exactly the same idea what, what SwitchDev is basically doing. So whoever has been uh, looking around a bit, maybe uh, maybe has stumbled uh, across this project called Dent, Dent OS. So that's that's one of the projects trying to build into the direction of, of uh, SwitchDev, where a switch is really in the end just just presented the same way as any server and the switch dev part is basically implementing the driver part that gives you access 
to those different ports. So supporting more platforms in the same way would probably mean for us moving a bit closer to this uh, switch dev part, moving a bit closer to then, let's see. So we're, we're currently discussing there a couple of things with people involved there. Um, but yeah, so adding platforms that support OFDPA is interesting for us and is really more or less dependent on the motivation from the outside. So if there is a customer that wants a specific thing, we're more than happy to, to discuss that part if it's just within the, the OFDPA um, support. If it's completely outside of that, um, I think we should still be able to help because we're currently actively looking into this direction of of switch dev, also Psy in general. So how, how does that work and how does it come together here? Um, so that's that's probably the answer there. So we can't really with OFDPA go to switches outside of this XGS by default without a lot of effort, but there is other other ways to go into that direction. Okay. Um, yeah, so the answer is between Sonic and Dent rather than um, and more. Is that a question between Sonic and Dent? Ah, uh, yeah. So this this contributing part right so why do you not just contribute to to sonic um the funny part is just contributing to sonic is is not as easy as uh, as you think so we've we've tried a bit so i've i've looked into the project went to all of the things tried to contribute and i guess the first thing you stumble over is if you want to start that um write an email to microsoft and ask them for permission um so it's it's this this just contributing to something and just working on something um, it might not be as easy there. And then the other part, what Hagen mentioned, is really how big is the project. So contributing to Sonic would also mean that you need to contribute in a lot of different areas. Because in contrast to to what we do, Sonic really rebuild all of the different systems. So there is a specific team just taking care of the FR part. There is a specific team just taking care, for example, for NetConf interfaces. There is another team that just looks at the, at the database interfaces and the SI interfaces downstream. Um, and there's a lot of different project teams out there that work on very different parts. Um, and there's a lot more involved than, than what we are actually focusing on. So for us, it's we kind of incorporate other projects, other open source projects. If we see an issue in FOR, we try to fix that with an FOR. Um, but we don't necessarily constantly patch FOR because that's not really our, our interface there. We try to, to use Netlink to stay stable, basically, or to stay constant in that part. And as long as uh, FOR also continues using the same interface, it should work without us constantly patching each other's code. While this is not true for, for Sonic, where like all of the interfaces are defined within the project and changing, and it's just a bit more more difficult, a bit more difficult architecture. Okay. One more question, 802.1x. Yeah, question uh, from Leo. <laughs> um, not inbuilt at the moment, but you should be able to, uh, to add it very quickly on the host. Um, so you can run a host APD on the uh, on the host. We we have a container runtime. You might you might host it there. Um, we could probably help you in 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 getting it. But if essentially it's 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 pulling up some it's pulling up some EAP traffic into into the the I mean the when I when I say the host I mean the control CPU on the white box switch. So um, you, we can build it. We can install it there. And then we need to configure it, but it's not at the moment. Uh, it's not documented and it's not done. So maybe maybe I'll already a question for, for, from just my end. So speaking about the features which we cannot find currently in the in the data sheet, uh, I am more or less familiar with your software and with your portal and and, and and documentation so on and so forth. In fact, it is pretty similar to what we saw from from the Cumulus. But speaking about what is coming soon. Is there is a place where people like like our guests can just go and take a look on what you guys are working as an X, some kind of like a roadmap, which is not under you know an NDAs and so on and so forth, especially when 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 you already open source it, yeah? Yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't have an NDA for a roadmap. I mean that is the <laughs> whole point of it. Yeah. But but this is a weak point. I mean I think that we need to 
we need to get a lot better in, in the in, on the community side of it and and actually have public roadmaps and discuss it with people uh, so far I mean that I would take this here as the encouragement for everyone else to reach out and discuss roadmaps there's an issue tracker on on github um, which we could use to start from that yeah so we have I guess looked a bit into that how we can can publish publish roadmaps. I mean, one part is really the the GitHub projects themselves, where we have issues and pull requests and all those things, and where we try to update regularly uh, what we're going for. Um, regarding the bigger features, um, I guess it's a bit more complicated because it also depends a bit on like who is currently interested in what. So regarding the basic data center features, I guess we're pretty much feature complete, at least for what you would usually use, apart from multi-chassis link aggregation. But yeah, as said, Linux is our interface and multi-chassis link aggregation is really not a core part of it. So uh, we have to uh, look a bit more into how we will implement that. We looked a bit at like what, how Sonic is doing that, for example. Um, and let's see if we can build on, on, on common projects there. Um, roadmap wise, I think we'll try a bit, bit more while building the community to publish roadmaps and to be a bit more open on what we're planning next. Uh, we cannot really publish our Trello board as it is right now. I mean, we're trying to plan a bit there, but there's so much stuff on there uh, that is probably probably not not easy to understand by by everybody because it's it's a lot of different projects uh, going going on there. And as said before, so the, the, the Linux itself, the BS Linux itself is completely open source and free to use. But then again, there's also a couple of other features that we're working on that are more out of this telco sector. So we also internally need to need to think a bit about like which which goes on which roadmap is that really the roadmap that should be for BI Gen Linux? Yeah. And what is the influence of the community there? And what is the influence of maybe a customer out of the telco sector that wants a specific feature? Um, so yeah, but we should definitely try try a bit harder to to publish roadmaps. That's that's a good point. <laughs> Another one, uh, PoE, Power Over Ethernet support. Yeah, I, I, I saw that you did the porting with the Helix 4 series. That is also including the PoE. H how you are looking there? It is. Uh, we added a little, a little script since um, it's sort of outside of what Linux would normally do. We added a little, little script called PoE Control. And okay. you can use that to to uh, configure switch on, switch off, and configure the voltage of the of the PoE interfaces. So it's also on Docs the end if you want if you want to see the details. Um, it essentially goes into a sysconfig and then and, and then switches on the uh, the PoE. But that that stuff works to the extent possible. And this is, I, I believe, like a great news, especially for those who 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 been using any PoE switches, because in our open networking world, having in mind all those all uh, software variation, unfortunately, those one who are supporting PoE, there are just few. It was uh, uh, or it is cumulus uh, cumulus networks. As far as I know, it will be also Pika at and the Picos, and of course, there are you. The rest, not yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, the the last question, which I was even uh, writing on the beginning, uh, it is the access to the lab or samples or a trial license. So maybe let me take that one on, on me. So yes, if any of you would like to play, we can provide you an access to our remote access to our to our lab. Provide you our samples are also it's also not an issue. And the last about the trial license, maybe that was just uh, the, the question on the beginning. We don't have to generate any trial license. You can take a full license and, and that's it, yeah? <laughs> so this is the beauty. Yeah. So yeah, on, on our side with regards to roadmap, yeah, there, as, as Jan mentioned before, there are some, some telco features. We need to add DHCP option 82 intermediate agent for PPP, so stuff like that, that is a bit more more um, coming from the application of the white box as OLT. Um, that is then uh, something w which is relatively straightforward. If you have an operating system, then you can also uh, plug in uh, OLT modules and then 
uh, run this entire thing. So this is our what, what BI is the end is, is then having as internal uh, roadmap requirements. But really, we are open and we shall get better at discussing publicly the roadmap of BI is the end Linux. All those inputs that you provided here. Uh, yeah, let's let us discuss uh, really on the P4 runtime. Um, that is an ongoing internal discussion. Um, how how shall we rebase uh, uh, Basebox D to to speak P4 runtime? Is P4 runtime isn't that actually rather an, um, narrowing down the 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 features of a, of a Tofino? So would it be does it make a lot of sense to to use it of you if you eventually just do a bit of enterprise networking so but that is a longer discussion to have yeah. probably over a beer or two <laughs> hopefully today at least where you are both yeah i know that 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 you've been uh, in some challenging let's say time uh, joining us from your hotel so i appreciate i don't see any other question um, I was also going over my one. So once again, I would like to thank you to our guests, to Hagen and Rian. It's really great to see where the whole project is going, especially the part about truly open sourcing. This is just unbelievable. And yes, looking forward. If anyone, if anyone of you will have any questions, please feel free to, 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 to drop an email directly to Hagen. It is also not an issue to provide the full contact details to, to, to Jan, or like always, you can reach out to, to us to store this to me directly. Once again, thank you for your time. I appreciate uh, that almost 50, 52 minutes. And gentlemen, have all a good event, whatever where you are today. And look IETF in Vienna. <laughs> IETF in Vienna. So looking forward, good luck there. Have a great, great evening. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for so hosting. Thanks for Have the questions. Evening. Thanks for the hosting.